Hello, this is Danny Bry from the College of Integrated Chinese Medicine looking at Chronic Fatigue Syndrome, ME. Remember, this is for acupuncture students only. Please pause and read this. So the typical symptoms of muscle fatigue, aching, cognitive dysfunction, sleep disturbance are caused by a lingering pathogenic factor. And this is complicated by various underlying deficiencies. So in about 60% of cases, this is a result of a viral infection, wind cold, wind heat, often complicated by dampness. Now usually the Wei Qi is responsible for throwing off and complete recovery from these invasions. And that relies on the Lung Qi and the Kidney or the Yuan Qi. And our Wei Qi relies on the Ying Qi for its nourishment. And that means our Spleen Qi and our Lung Qi which itself relies on the strength of our reserves, our diet and our lifestyle to remain healthy. If our body fails to eliminate these pathogens completely, we get left with a lingering pathogenic factor, usually a mixture of damp and heat, but can involve a hard phlegm and wind. And as our Wei Qi struggles in this battle with the lingering pathogen, more and more of our reserve army or our Ying Qi gets drawn in and our systems gradually get more and more depleted and hence the cycles of flu-like symptoms and exhaustion. So why are these invasions not thrown off? If before an invasion we have weak Wei Qi, weak Ying Qi or an internal build-up or if during the invasion we don't get enough rest, we're stressed or we have inappropriate treatment and the pathogenic factors can remain become a lingering pathogenic factor and transform internally into damp or heat. And what about the 40% that don't come after an invasion? These are due either to latent heat or to yin fire, which we'll explain in a minute. If the lingering pathogenic factor is damp, which is most common, it can affect the head, giving poor memory and concentration, muzzy head. It can affect the muscles, giving muscle aches and tiredness, heaviness. And it can affect the spleen and stomach organs, giving digestive and abdominal upset. If there's heat involved, we see the usual symptoms. Thirst, night sweating, sticky yellow tongue coating. And if there's thick phlegm, we see swollen knotted glands, always get these checked out. And typical signs of phlegm. As well as the spleen and stomach, and it can affect the liver and gallbladder and the bladder, giving typical symptoms. Latent heat or spring heat occurs when a pathogenic factor invades but shows no symptoms. Traditionally in winter, but more often when we're over, overworked. And then later, traditionally in spring, but usually no when we're stressed or when we get another wind invasion, the symptoms manifest as internal heat. And this means muscle, muscle fatigue, thirst, insomnia, often a cough, along with the typical tiredness. Yin fire, on the other hand, was an idea from Li Dong Yuan and his Nourish the Earth School. And he suggested Poor diet combined with emotional imbalance can lead to spleen qi and yang deficiency and a deficiency of the yuan qi, often with lung qi deficiency as well, and that this leads to uh, the minister fire flaring up, leaving its place in the lower jaw and manifesting up in the upper jaw, giving, feeling the heat in the face, mouth ulcers, mold, background fevers. So in terms of the lingering pathogenic factor, we want to ask, what is it? Balance of heat, damp or other pathogens. We want to ask, how did it get there? Was it post-infection um, or was there no infection at all? And we also want to ask, where is it located? So we can track where a pathogenic factor is in the body by the six stages for wind cold and the four levels for warm disease or wind heat. 
So with wind cold, we start off, start off with a typical head cold or chill. It then progresses to a more flu-like presentation with the four bigs, so big pulse, big thirst, big fever, big sweating. If it's not properly expressed, it can get stuck in the Xiao Yang, which is the triple burner and gallbladder, where the pathogen is half internal and half external. So the Xiao Yang acts as like a hinge in between the Taiyang and the Yang Ming levels. And with a Xiao Yang pathogen, we get typical cyclical recurrent or subacute symptoms and the very typical alternating chills and fever. Along with this, we get signs of heat rising up and affecting the gallbladder. We get the gallbladder channel blocked, so typical hypochondriac and chest pains, feeling blocked or feeling stuffy. And we get a very typical um, half a, a, a tongue coat or a wiry pulse, which looks like this. So the pathogen can get beyond uh, these stages and affect the tie in the lung and the spleen and the show in the kidney and the heart we often see progression to these organs if it affects the dway in level then the disease is very deep and the pericardium and liver are affected and these look like our typical patterns of spleen yang deficiency with cold and damp or heart and kidney deficiency which can either be cold yang deficiency or hot yin deficiency. Similarly with wind heat, an invasion can be at the way level, like a sore throat. It can get to the qi level, secondary immune system, where we again get the four bigs, big sweat, big thirst, big fever, big pulse. This is the stage at which we're ill in bed and not getting out. And it can progress deeper into the yin and the blood levels. So at the qi level, gallbladder heat is the same as Xiaoyang level, but more heat signs, so more hot and cold, thirsty, red tongue. We can also have residual heat at the qi level with some qi and yin deficiency. This can affect the lungs, giving the hacking cough, it can affect the stomach, giving nausea and vomiting, or it can affect the shen and give restlessness, insomnia, irritability. So as well as considering the lingering pathogenic factor and considering what it is and where it is, we also need to consider the underlying deficiency, work out the balance between fullness and emptiness and treat appropriately. So typically yang deficiency of the kidney and spleen, blood deficiency of the liver and heart, qi deficiency of the spleen and stomach, the lungs, possibly heart and kidney, and yin deficiency of the kidneys, the lung and the stomach. So to review, an onset with an invasion, some lingering pathogenic factor. Onset without an invasion, we think about latent heat and yin fire. We want to know what's the pathogenic factor, usually damp and heat, but can be other things. Where's the lingering pathogenic factor? Is it the way the Xiaoyang or Qi level and which organs are involved? We want to consider what the deficiency is, which organs are involved, which substances are involved, and what's the percentage of deficiency and fullness. We also want to consider the CF and which blocks we might need to treat, and we need to consider liver qi stagnation. That's a very brief introduction to ME and chronic fatigue.